the first the first episode on totally in English, right? Yeah. Normally we we do the the introduction in, in Spanish <laughs> and then we switch to English, but yeah, why not? Let's do this in English. And 100%. Uh, yeah, and this is why uh, and this is because we uh, we have a a very interesting guest uh, in this episode. Um this guest is very into inside photography actually. So that will be very, very interesting. And let's introduce who is our guest, right, Beto? Yeah, uh, from New York City, uh, Ben Fraternell. I I hope I get the the last name. <laughs> okay, Ben. Very correct good. Me, correct very me. close. <laughs> yeah, Fraternell. I get Fraternell a lot, but I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for having me on, Beto and David. It's an honor to be here. Um, you know, this, this is a great show, so I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so, so it's Frater, Fraternelli? Yes. Very Fraternelli. good. Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, and I hope you didn't do the intro <laughs> in Spanish on my accord. I would have loved it, but that's but whatever, whatever you guys want to do. <laughs> oh, well, well, that, uh, we did that in the past with Kyle McDougall and other uh, guests, but, uh, we thought that maybe this is the best option for your fans or so actually and all the audience that is uh, English speakers, so. <laughs> True, okay, you know, whatever works. We can we can do a little retake now in Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> y ahora con nosotros está Ben Fraternelli, desde Nueva York, un fotógrafo de, fotógrafo in, de cámaras instantáneas, con un trabajo impresionante. Exactamente. Y ahora otra vez en inglés. <laughs> that's, that's great. See, a, a lot of the audience of the, like I checked the YouTube, um, like the demographics break down all the time and majority of people watching are from other countries other than the US. So like, you know, I love to hear it and it's awesome to be on the show. Amazing. We, we didn't you. know that. That's amazing. That's the magic of YouTube, right? It is. It yeah. is. I mean, it's not really what I even expected going in. I, I mean, I don't know what I expected, but I know that um, <laughs> when I saw the minority of the people watching were in the US, I was kind of surprised and I was just, I, I thought it was great, especially during, you know, this whole COVID thing, being able to talk with people around yeah. the world every day, it's hype. We love that. Yeah, yeah it is. Well, here, here in Mexico, like all the, the, especially film photography channels on, on YouTube are, are very, very popular. Oh, like, that's cool. Th there's a not a, that's not a lot of content made in Mexico about uh, film photography. So we yeah. run to, to you guys in the US that also you, you are like, very passionate and, and very, very, yeah. <laughs> very consistent with your work. <laughs> no, I appreciate yeah. this crossover. <laughs> well, Ben, uh, this interview is for knowing you, know your your work, your project. So the first question is, who is Ben? Where, <laughs> can you can you answer that? <laughs> oh my gosh, what a philosophical can, question! Can who you? am I? <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I'm made of flesh and bone. Um, I have my blood type is AB positive. Amazing. Um, I, uh, as you mentioned, I'm from New York. Uh, I am a director, editor, cinematographer, overall filmmaker person yeah. and photographer. And, uh, I have been doing that for my whole career and I absolutely love it. And I sort of right before COVID actually happened. So like 2019, I started thinking like, wow, it'd be kind of fun to do a YouTube channel. I didn't know if I was going to really want to invest in something like that, but I ended up, you know, putting the time in and figuring it out and like, how do I do this thing? And I ended up uh, launching a YouTube channel in an instant, which is all about instant photography. Yeah. And I just thought, you know, why the heck not? Let's try it. And now we're, <laughs> we're like, you know, over a year and a half in or something like that. And, and uh, it's part of who I am now. <laughs> it's part of who Ben is now, so um, I'm loving it. And I love this community, and uh, you know, you get to be on shows like this, which is phenomenal. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. So, Ben, what what uh, led you to photography, or or let's say filmmaking, photography, image crafting, whatever you 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 want to say? What what led you to that? Yeah, um, I. I definitely have always, 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 always been interested in it. Like, I really was the most annoying kid. Like, I had the Canon camcorder. I was filming everybody. Um, the, and now I look back at the footage and I see everyone was annoyed. I didn't realize that at the time. But I was that kid. I was just filming everything, taking pictures of everything. 
every two Christmases or something, I would get a camera that was like a little bit better than the last one because they were like two megapixels back then. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so I sort of developed some like skills and real interest through shooting sports uh, in middle school okay. and then eventually high school. And that had that would just became something I was always going to do for like the rest of my life in some capacity. And it's really it got me to develop that palette of filmmaking and photography and sort of how do you do this? Downloading editing software uh, illegally at the time. Now I have it legally. <laughs> um, and, yeah, we and just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting Photoshop CS2 or whatever off of LimeWire or whatever the hell it was. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and LimeWare, um, uh, LimeWare and Kazan. Yeah. RS, uh, that was the software in that. <laughs> yeah, shout Makers. out to LimeWare. Underrated. <laughs> uh, we miss you very much. Um, and that ended up just always being a part of me. I went to college thinking I was going to do photojournalism maybe or video journalism. And that and it turns out I wasn't really that interested in journalism. I was mostly just interested in taking photos and shooting videos and making <laughs> films. So I ended up deciding, okay, that's what I'm doing. Enjoyed the rest of college, didn't worry too much about it, and then just, you know, pursued my career from there. Fantastic. And, and <laughs> with that approach to uh, photography, what leads you leads you to film photography? Because uh, that's the, I don't know, maybe the hype from the last three or five years on YouTube and in um, social media, but you specifically, you, you have a very passionate uh, YouTube channel about instant photography. So what, what leads you to that? Yeah, it's a great question because it is definitely, it feels like a trend in some ways, but it's also so popular now that it's like beyond a trend. It's now just like exactly. a thing that, you know, most people are somewhat interested in a little bit. Um, for me, I think a lot of it, comes down to an appreciation for the era of time that like this technology came from and and like being in, a little bit in touch with history and a little bit in touch with uh, the humanness of film and and getting super drowned out by everything being digital like everybody has experienced that yeah. shoots film it's like oh my god like does everything have to be digital um, and I have just a very strong connection with with the history of it I think and Instant film, particularly, I have a strong history within my life. Like I shot when I was a kid and I was very much connected to that, but also the history of the medium and how interesting the invention of instant film was and how much of like a miracle it is. It's all of film is a miracle, but instant film in particular, the fact that it like appears in front of your eyes, there's something about that that's like a magic trick that you can bring around yeah. and it's very social, which I'm a very social person. So all of that, I think just resonates with me a lot. And I thought eventually I'm going to have to make a YouTube channel. I, f I saw there was a little window in there of like, Oh, there's not that many channels about this right now. And I was like, I might have a spot and we'll see what happens. And we're currently seeing what happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the, 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 current status for, of everybody in, in social media and YouTube. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're seeing what happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was sort of daunting because it felt like, uh, what a commitment. I mean, I'm, I'm a very, uh, I, I commit to things very strongly and I knew that if I was going to do this, I was going to do it. And it's, I'm dealing with the consequences now of, <laughs> of like going all in on it, but I'm, I'm having a great time. Fantastic. Great. Wait, we we've also saw uh, your films on 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 your your web page. Mm. Awesome, by the way. I, I was curious uh, about yeah. uh, the that one's uh, spot of NFL or or oh yeah yeah football. yeah fifty yard dash what? is the yeah. What what was that shot with? I I was just curious. Um, the like the football videos you were seeing. Yeah, yeah, that was shot on a. Some of it was shot like the super slow mo on a Panasonic GH5. Okay. Um, that would be like okay. where I would shoot the 180 frames per second stuff. And then anything that was like 60 frames per second, I was usually using the C200, the Canon C200. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. And I now I have a C300 Mark III, and it is like bonkers. The, the, wow. uh, using yeah. autofocus to shoot sports video is something that I like was really unfamiliar with. It, it's it's crazy watching something like that or, or doing it deciding to to shoot football in slow motion with manual focus it's it's so hard so now that these yeah. canon cameras have like these amazing autofocus i'm yeah it's it's so great even even the the 
the C100 Mark II has yep. a very great out of focus. It's like, come on. What, yeah, what, it's what wild. It? It's, <laughs> yeah. it's super, super cool. It so relieves that, a layer of stress out of it for sure. Yeah. We yesterday day we we were talking and we we almost bet that that stuff would shot on a red on a red, on a red or, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. It looks it looks great. It looks. Oh, great. I really appreciate it. I get, I have gotten that before. I was like, what model red are you shooting with? And I it's. It's some of it is the lensing. I mean, honestly, that's a big mm, part of it. Mm. Like shooting with like a, a 70 to 200 Mark II Canon lens. And that's like one of the best lenses ever, in my opinion. And it's going to make stuff look so silky and the separation's beautiful. And so I, I credit some of that to the lens. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, it's an amazing work. Uh, we were very amazed by all your work and all the all over your web page, web, web page. so oh, thank you that's amazing that's amazing work so if somebody wants to go to the website oh yeah they'll leave the link uh, over here or over, all over somewhere. here somewhere somewhere, somewhere, here, somewhere <laughs> here so when um, back to the instant photography um i know you you told us uh, why instant photography but uh, it maybe in some moment it was very frustrating mm. because uh, you don't have access to the to that kind of um, um, I don't know film uh, yeah. no, nowadays. Uh, for example, the FP one hundred C. I don't know. So how how do you um, enjoy that frustrated <laughs> moment with instant it, photography? Totally. <laughs> that that's definitely part of it. We are assuming you enjoyed it because you're continuing <laughs> <Yeah>. shooting instant <laughs> film. <Yeah. laughs> I definitely enjoy it, but you're right. There is like, especially when you're starting with it, there's there's frustration involved. Like when I first got back into it, the me, I mean the the uh, the Polaroid format or the Impossible Project stuff was yeah. not even close to good enough. You know, in, in terms of how I remembered it, and I was looking at my childhood photos like what is this? Like, this is not the same thing at all. I, you know, but you stick with it. And, um, especially with how, first of all, I think Polaroid, the, their chemistry has gotten so good, you know, un, it's underrated how much they've improved in my opinion. Um, but there was definitely frustration building to that, but you also get into the way it looks and you get into using that palette or like sometimes maybe you would want to use Instax because it looks a certain way, or you have this, very rare film in the fridge fp 100 c and you're going on yeah. a special trip and you're like okay i'm gonna bring one pack of that i'm gonna save <laughs> two packs for my wedding you know <laughs> well, you know maybe there'll be babies one day we'll save one pack for them um so <laughs> you budget stuff in your brain about that kind of thing but um the struggle i think the struggle in general i think with the medium brings everyone a little bit closer because everyone's sort of gone through it and um it's all a learning process and once you get once you get very used to how it works, you can really use it to just be like a beautiful expression, I think, artistically. So um, that's been that's been one of the most fun things in 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 getting to know the photog uh, the format really well. OK. Yeah, it's, it, it is almost like transforming that that element of surprise to a a creative opportunity, mm -hmm. a creative output. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting way to, to see it, because everybody else could get so frustrated and, and even <laughs> just leave uh, instant photography like this is not for me goodbye yeah and I see comments all the time that are like this doesn't look like the old stuff I'm done I'm like well you gotta <laughs> shoot shoot like three packs or something before you say that like really let yourself sit with how it looks and what you can do with it because it can be just it's, an, it's just another artistic tool I mean I love shooting mm. uh, you know large format celluloid and that looks incredible and way different than polaroid does but um it's all about how you use it and how you imagine how uh, your an image you want to produce looks and sometimes that works for polaroid sometimes it doesn't but um some people just need to chill out a little bit it is kind of expensive but they need to chill out a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. it is <laughs> yeah you, you need to be in love with the process to, to yes. get to to just get keep going and and, and keep uh, like it's an 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 experiment uh, after all. You just, yes, exactly. You just keep learning, learning, learning from the same film stock or from the same uh, uh, package of of instant film. I think it's an an never ending learning process. Absolutely, totally. Which which I love. 
so so Ben, what what was your your first? I don't know if you, if you remember your first instant camera. <laughs> I think it was oh. a like a uh, 600 folding camera, like one of the oh, classic okay. ones that folded open with the big plasticky looking thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know we had that and I, uh, we have like a, I think most of the Polaroids I took when I was little were on something like that. We also had a Spectra, a Polaroid Spectra camera, okay. which mm. is, was very nice. <laughs> yeah, actually it's, it's one of the best designed cameras actually. Well, well I thought the, uh, the Spectra Polaroid. Oh yeah. Camera. I totally agree. Yeah, it's it beautiful. was. The, there's like one of the earliest photos of me is on Polaroid Spectra, and it it looks incredible. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's so clear. <laughs> I mean, like those. The camera was great. The film was amazing, and you could literally send like a Polaroid Spectra shot out to Polaroid, and they would do like enlargements, and they would actually look good because the oh, really? film was that good. Yeah, it's crazy. And Spectra, the size of it it's essentially large format. I mean, it's not four by five, but it's, it's, it's larger than your normal Polaroid and it's big. So the, the field of view is really cool. I, I miss Spectra. My heart's, my heart <laughs> is bleeding. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> and how do you, how, I think that every family in the world, actually, or may, maybe mm -hmm. not all the world, but in most families, every family had a, uh, instant camera actually yeah because it was the the cheaper way to access to the photography world to make a, a memory to to remember maybe uh, well mexico the quinceanera uh, Paris, <laughs> yep. uh, or i don't know the the birthday of the grandma or something like yeah. that so it's a it's that meaning of that photograph instant photography it's it's uh, for you the same right now? That's a great question. I, I think for me it's different because of the volume that I shoot. Like I, I shoot it as an everyday artistic format, which is definitely different than the everyday kind of thing. But I think that in recent years, with how popular Instax is, um, I think it's awesome that, that instant film is still being used the way you're saying. Like People are still bringing it to quinceaneras and people are bringing it to birthday parties and it's very popular in colleges i was just i just went on a trip last week i was on the airplane the seat in front of me someone was taking a polaroid when i got to one of the national parks someone handed me an instax mini 8 and was like can you take a photo of us <laughs> like it's awesome people are actively using this stuff. it's 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 underrated how popular it is i think right now um and people are using it like that and i think i love that because film can be a bit complicated to people they're like I don't even know what to do with this thing. This 35 millimeter roll or whatever. They're like, I don't get this. The camera might be broken or whatever, but everyone knows how to just point shoot a little, you know, print comes out and you don't have to do anything else. So yeah. um, I think it's cool that it's still being used like that. Yes, it, it is pretty intuitive guys. So sorry. I have to go out for a second because oh, okay, don't worry uh, about that. <laughs> My 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 dog's food just arrived, so I have to go downstairs and receive it. <laughs> Completely <laughs> understandable. Go go better go. I yeah, you, you you guys carry on and I I I'll catch up. Yeah yeah go. go. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> so Ben, uh, <laughs> Ben, uh, so um, for example, uh, which is your worst experience with instant photography? Because That's a great you, question. I, 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 because I have a lot of world experience with the F100C. Mm, uh, yeah. That because I put so much effort in, in one photo and I yeah, put the and lights it... and, and uh, I search for the perfect moment in the day and I, I wait for my dog to sleep uh, very, <laughs> very calmly. So this, and I thought this is the perfect moment. And I took the photo and I did, <laughs> I peel apart of the film and it was like no chemicals or dry. Oh, <laughs> oh, so it's it, terrible. It, it was the the worst. So uh, that for me it is the worst experience for in film photography in instant photography for you, which is the worst experience. Um, I think well, this is one of them. Um, I had so Polaroid made eight by ten film in the past. They still make it sort of. It's hopefully going to come back soon. But um, they made this like incredible peel apart eight by 10 film. Um, somebody gave me a box for like an incredible price, but I, but I was still paying for it. And I was like, oh my God, I can't wait to try this. This is a legendary format. I thought it had a high chance of working. Uh -huh. um, and 
Uh, I take the first shot. I, again, like you said, like setting everything up very carefully. Like, I don't want to screw this up. This is a very rare <laughs> thing. And I put it through the processor. And as I'm peeling it, the, the like film starts sort of like not being, to, there's nothing to peel. Like it's not even stuck together. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, fuck. All I, dry, and it's all just dry, like a, right? a complete dry white sheet. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, this is terrible. Like, am I ever going to get a chance to try something like that ever again? So that was tough. There's a couple, I would say, moments too where, like, uh, if it's too hot or too cold or something, like an entire pack will get totally like burned or look like crazy orange or something. And it's just like a, it's a shame because you're out and about, you're trying to do your best. And sometimes the film can't hang. But uh, I have some tricks now to make sure that doesn't happen again. (laughs) <laughs> so, so did you try the the other option for F one hundred C that it's from Polaroid? The I don't know. Uh, Super Sense. It's the six hundred sixty nine and six hundred sixty. Yeah, there's six six nine. Yeah, yeah. There's those films. I have shot them. They don't they don't hold up anywhere nearly as good as FP one hundred C. FP one hundred C was just like a miracle. Like just yeah. like the best film i think that was ever made i mean the fact that it makes a negative the fact that it can be uh, it can be brought out in extreme heat or extreme cold (laughs) it can pretty much sit on the shelf without being refrigerated for years and still work uh the polaroid films for some reason just didn't hold up as well most 669 i've shot is like super blue i have some of it but it doesn't it's not as exciting i don't think uh because i mean for some people they use it for amazing artistic purposes but yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I definitely FP one hundred and FP three thousand mm-hmm. are my two favorite like pack film. Actually, F uh, uh, three uh, no F one hundred B. Yeah. Also yeah, yeah. In black and white. I, yes. I, ha- I had one, and I saw that you can also scan the negative that you left in the in the pillar part, right? Did, yeah. Did yeah. You, you can. It's it's really cool. Um, it's the like it's not as uh it's not the same as like with fp 100 c where if you bleach it you can actually get like a clear negative and that acts like any other negative but i think with 100 b and i know with 3000 b you can just scan the negative side and like invert it and it's cool it looks really cool but i don't know if it's going to be much like sharper or anything like that than the than the positive print but it still looks amazing i highly recommend doing it I, yeah. I just always save your negatives in general. Yeah, actually, uh, how uh, how is that process to preserve your negatives in for instant uh, format? How do you save that um, negative? It's it's kind of hard. You mean like saving like the FP one hundred C negative? You have yeah. to like um, so after you've peeled it, you have to let the side you peeled off dry. You have to let both sides dry. I just keep them in a box. And when I'm feeling motivated, I <laughs> I do this. Um, you basically have to mount them face down onto a sheet of glass and then uh, soak it, the whole thing with water so that it sticks to the glass, like just the tension, it, it's, yeah. it stays on the glass. And then you take some uh, bleach that was intended for toilets. Uh, that's <laughs> yeah, because, you- yeah, yeah, toilet bowl bleach. And we're putting toilet bowl bleach all over our film now. And you have to like wash it off with a paintbrush and it comes right off. And you have to be very careful because if you bleach the front of it, it it's going to destroy the image. But after you do that and you let it dry, it, it's a negative. It's amazing. It's like it's a yeah. large format negative suddenly. And it it's very grainy, but so cool. I mean, the yeah. results can be amazing. Sometimes there's weird color shifts and stuff, but... Yeah, actually, that that was my, my case because I, I bleached the, the negative. And actually, I sent it to, to Beto. The, he has... a. Uh, uh, film lab and um, he scanned all the negatives and actually yeah. the, the colors shift in a very strange uh, yeah it can way. happen for sure yeah I don't know why but but it's interesting the process is very interesting and actually I miss up with some negatives I bleach all the negatives and I want yeah to, uh, that can happen too uh, yeah fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the magic of the instant uh, instant it's story. true it <laughs> and it and it's part of it i think it exemplifies why film in general is can be so fun like yeah. i think when people are often asked like well, why do you shoot film you know your digital camera is as good first of all it's not second of all 
it's just more fun. <laughs> like yeah. there's more options. You could do stuff like you could take toilet bowl cleaner and put it on the back and, and take the freaking black backing off. And now you have an, like that stuff you just can't do on, uh, on a 5d. <laughs> if you put toilet bowl bleach on the back of your 5d, I don't think it's going to be a great day for you. So I don't know. I just have fun with all the little things you can do. <laughs> So, but everything is good with your with the food. Uh, yeah, yeah. How are we doing every, over there? Everything perfect. Yeah, ah, these okay, guys good. eat better than I do, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, I hope I I didn't miss a lot. But no, we were talking about the the negatives that yeah, you yeah. you sent me to scan, David. Yeah. These are taken from. I'm not a, an instant film expert, but these are are. I've heard you you bleach. The yeah. black, every, everything. So you have an, an instant printed copy and you can retrieve also the negative from that? Yep. Oh. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's yeah. so Great. cool. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was amazed with that, those negatives David uh, sent me. So I, I, I didn't have the chance. David, maybe you should uh, show me another day. Yeah. What was the, the original print that, that came out of that film and mm -hmm. versus the, the digital one? So, so we can compare them. Yeah, uh, let, let me go through the, to the negatives then. Oh yeah, yeah, great, great. Yeah, I did a, on, on a recent video, I showed a couple examples. I shot some FP um, 4x5 film, which is like insane. It was the 4x5 FP100C, which is one of the wow. rarest at this point. And I where, where do you I, get that stuff? <laughs> well, Brooklyn <laughs> yeah, Film Camera, doing? Brooklyn Film Camera oh. uh, got like a shipment from somebody and every time they do Kyle, thank God he lets me know because uh, he like gives me a heads up. He's like, we just got the shipment and you might want to know this. And I brought some <laughs> out and it was amazing. And the negatives, now you're getting a four by five negative. Yeah, I mean, and, you this know, is which is crazy. The F uh, yep. one, 100C negative. I need there to bleach it. I need to bleach it, but, um, but this is the, the, the original and only a negative that I have. <laughs> and this is the, well, the printed that you get. This is but It's a, it's a oh. labor of love. It's a labor of love clearing them for sure. It, it takes yeah. a long time, um, but the results can be really fun. Yeah, actually, it's, it's really fun because, but you have to be very patient and very careful. <laughs> so basically yeah. what you do with the bleach is to, to remove all the residue of the, the chemical process that yeah, you're removing the, the black backing of like the negative. Their, like oh, ramjet, okay. uh, ramjet layer? Essentially, yeah. yeah. The, the yeah. anti aliasing layer? Yeah, or and something like the that. the fact that it even has that, that negative was essentially, to my understanding, an accident. Like, they didn't even really intend, they didn't intend at all for the film to be used like that. And only yeah. one other, or uh, two other Polaroid, original Polaroid film types even could be done like that. Um, type 55, which is a super famous black and white film, that one gave you a negative, and uh, the 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 smaller like two by three version could all the type 67 could also be uh, the negative could be taken out of it. But FP 100C it was just like a fluke that you could even do that, and it's amazing. Uh, New 55 is a company that's currently making four by five peel apart black and white film oh. that you get a negative from, and it's really cool. They use like a Kodak negative. Um, and so you peel it apart, you drop the negative into fixer like right away. And okay. then you get your instant print and you got your negative and it's really, it's awesome. And it's four by five, which we love. Amazing. That actually Beto saw that, saw a photo of the portrait on four by five actually. And that was our, our that this is one of our questions. Uh, where did you get that? <laughs> so so, you so get that? is is that new film being being made? Is not repackaged or? This is or, a great question. Like that. This is like yeah. the main thing right now because everybody's yeah. desperate for new chemistry yeah. to be made, yeah. and I can I'm happy to say that New Fifty Five, which is this company that makes this four by five black and white peel apart film, it is new chemistry. The negative. Okay. I, to my understanding, is a Kodak negative, but that's fine. We don't really care. There, there will always be Kodak negative to use. But the print is new chemistry. They are blending new stuff in house and making this stuff from scratch. It's amazing, but expensive and done by hand. So that the thing is, is like it's always going to be pricey and it's always going to 
be hard to get it right away. You can order it right now and you'll probably get it in like a month, but um, it's like always back ordered. The goal I think would be to get that over to the guys at SuperSense. There, that's where Doc is. He he's the one who uh, created the Impossible Project, and hopefully get him to make some of that for for Type 100 pack film, which is the smaller one that like FP 100C is. Um, mm. That would be amazing because it would really save the format essentially. Yeah, actually, it's, it's well, that, that was that uh, is exciting yeah. because like new chemistry new emulsion in that, yeah you yeah. you don't hear that that thing every day we, we hope oh. but but we don't that, it's that funny it, it's like super new like it's very wet when you <laughs> when you peel it apart the instant print is very wet it's much more wet than you, you're used to and so the chemistry uh is very uh painterly it looks like a painting because it's almost kind of a little bit mushy because there's so much chemistry and they haven't like totally perfected how to make the the print itself look really good. They're still working on that, but the negative looks great. So the fact you're still getting both, but they're still working up to it. They'll figure it out. I'm sure. I hope. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they will. Yeah, actually, it sounds sound, that's uh, the best new uh, I got this week. Actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's big news. Yeah, it's great. News. If they can figure that out, it is yeah. really great. Yeah, actually, that's amazing. I, I'm been. Which is your your favorite um, format for instant photography? I think if we're just if we're just putting aside FP 100C, we're pretending that that doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> I think the Polaroid eight by ten might be the coolest thing ever. Um, it is absolutely incredible. the The integral eight by ten film that Polaroid currently makes is it's got the like a magic dream like quality of Polaroid film, but you're using it on these eight by ten cameras. The 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 experience of doing that with somebody and like showing them how it works and and looking letting them look through the ground glass on the back of an eight by ten camera their minds are just like putty they're just it's pouring out of their ears their brains are coming through their nose they can't even believe what they're seeing and then you and then you put it through the processor and it comes out and you flip it over and you see it for the first time there's so much anticipation um, so I think Polaroid eight by ten might be my favorite because it's like the best of both worlds, and you get this like beautiful experience with another person showing them how this works and stuff. It's always like a little workshop every time you do it. <laughs> nice. You guys need to and, come to New York because we will do an eight by ten portrait. Oh yeah, oh, please, yeah. yeah. We we want the, to. The I, invite I, is open. I've never. Uh, thank you, you too, to Mexico City. Whenever you yeah. are. We're All right, here. let's do it. I've never been to to New York City. Uh, David, uh, yeah, I've been in there. 2000, 2019, I've been there. Okay, okay, okay. So you're due for another visit? Yeah, totally. <laughs> I, I want it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm please. sure we'll see you guys soon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I would love to go. I, I mean, if if this COVID thing weren't... Uh, oh, yeah. We'll get rid of this soon, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hope uh, next year everything will be more more... Yes, totally. Accessible, yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to go to Spain uh, now in in October, and whoa, that's pretty soon. Yeah, I, I, um, I hope yeah. we we can we can make it. And I'm I, I'm going to Carmen Cita Film Lab. I, I just want to to know that those guys and they I hope they give me a tour of of their oh, lab. That's amazing. Yeah, that'll be great. Uh, it's really fun to like uh it's it's I, I i have a great time every time i'm visiting somewhere to find the like local film store and yeah. and especially if you know them from instagram or, or something like that mm -hmm. it's so cool it's like you have a little home like a little satellite <laughs> home in another country or another state it's so fun uh, i love doing that everywhere i go <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the, the new objective of, of my trips. Before it was eating a lot. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. it's just finding the, the, the film spots. And, and exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ben, and talking about traveling and all that uh, kind of stuff, what do you what what can you tell about your last trip? Because I saw oh, yeah. on Instagram that you go on the trip and you took obviously a lot of instant photos. Yeah, I just got back like two days ago. I, I drove 3,000 miles um, through. Uh, I flew somewhere first. Like I flew to the western area of the United States. And then I rented a car and I just drove like an insane distance. Um, I, I went uh, to Utah, which has these national parks, which are mm. uh, 
unbelievable. They look like they're from the dinosaur era, some of them. They, they've got these <laughs> rock formations that are uh, some of the most amazing things I've ever seen. And I, I'm working on a book right now, and uh, it, it centers around the American West and Route 66 and the national yeah. parks and sort of the the established ideas that America came up with for like how its citizens would enjoy its country and like you know the 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 recreational opportunities sort of and the dream of the West and so I visited uh, some national parks and I went down to Route 66 which is um, a road in the U.S. that was designed back in I want to say like the 30s through the 60s really was its popularity um and that was a road just designed for tourism it was designed so that you would drive through all these states in the south there would be a motel wherever you went there'd be a cafe in every town it, w- it would create uh commerce and uh, benefit the economy everywhere you went and r- now it's it's now it's nothing like that anymore it's it's uh, everything is closed <laughs> <laughs> like um it's like in complete disrepair it's a film photographer's dream so uh, a lot of my time was spent rummaging around that area and driving through new mexico and uh, texas and it was a absolute cr- i mean i was dead but i'm still dead i mean it's insane how far i went but um yeah it was amazing it was incredible and, and it was on instant film, which is kind of hard to travel with. You know, I had a cooler in the Ooh. back seat. I was buying ice at gas stations every other Come on. <laughs> every other day. <laughs> it was it was really crazy. Um, I, I was uh, it was it's always a balancing act, and it was like a hundred degrees, so I had to be very oh, yeah. careful with with the temperature of everything. Yeah, it sounds sounds very risky, but <laughs> yes, it, but it's worth it. Yeah, it is, and and occasionally, you know. I know where my like hot zones are for where I can buy more film, but it's very hard to find places where you can. So I'll know like, Oh, I'm going to go the next three days and have not even be a hundred miles within anywhere. I could buy Polaroid film. And then I'll, <laughs> I'll land in like Oklahoma city and I'm like, okay, I can buy film here. You know, it's, it's <laughs> some of it is like just budgeting how much you have and making sure you don't run out. Cause you get eight shots per box. It's like, you know, it's no guarantee you're going to have it. <laughs> That uh, that is a, a a tricky tricky trip. Yeah, it's it's hard to budget your your shots, and it's hard not to go crazy because you're seeing these amazing things. You just want to yeah, go like bam you, bam you bam bam bam. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't. One of the formats I was shooting on was a Polaroid 35 millimeter instant film, which is something that I had in the fridge that I've been waiting to shoot. I, I've shown it before, but I but I saved a bunch of it because I was like, I'm gonna want to use this on a special time. Yeah. So with that, you do get 36 shots in a 35 millimeter canister that goes into a regular SLR. And you, when you're done, you rewind it, you bring it into an, a separate processor, and oh, you okay. click it into the processor, and then you click a little box, and the box is filled with Polaroid chemistry, and you crush the box into this processor, and it basically uh, takes it, the film. It floods. Oh, okay. Yeah, it basically sandwiches the film with backing, like you would get on FP. So, like when you peel uh, it apart, it sandwiches that with the backing, which has the chemistry oh. on it, and it rolls it all the way up, and then it unrolls it, and you get thirty-six Polaroid shots in a roll. It is unbelievable. This is a video show, right? I can show you what this looks like. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the. Uh, 35 mil Polaroid 35 millimeter power processor. What? It is crazy. <laughs> this, so this opens up and you put the film into this little spot and you okay. put the canister in here and then it like rolls it through here and you close this and it is crazy guys. I think it's one of the coolest things that Polaroid ever made. And wow. unfortunately it's of course discontinued uh, for 19 years. It's been discontinued, but um, the shots came out awesome. <laughs> Come on, I have never, never heard of, of that thing in in my life. That is, it's so it's amazing. so weird. It's it's one of those things that it's one of those things that was produced by Polaroid for the purposes of people needing to see things right away. So, like, if yeah. you had someone that was uh, at a construction site or something, and they needed to document the construction site, they would take their thirty five millimeter Polaroid, boom, 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 boom process it then they'd have slides it's slide film so once it separates they become slides and you could just and put you, them into a projector project yeah it, yeah right away Come it's on. so cool they even made these like large industrial machines 
that would make uh, charts or like graphs onto the film. So like if you had the color film, you could make like a bar chart, bring it into a meeting and put it into a slide projector. And you basically use Polaroid to make like charts. It's insane. <laughs> These are the kinds of weird <laughs> ideas that Polaroid <laughs> had back in the day. <laughs> like a, 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 I don't know, an analog uh, PowerPoint or some it's keynote or something yeah, like it's that. A, it's an analog. It's the most analog PowerPoint ever. What? Um, so I yeah. shot like three rolls of that, and it was um, it was so cool to shoot. Imagine, imagine yeah, that man. that crazy meetings on Polaroid. Uh, I was just <laughs> thinking about that. The the, the creative team at yeah. Polaroid was wild, man. Yeah. They yeah, were. Let's do this. Let's do that. <laughs> That sounds very that, that's a, that's amazing actually. They were genuine geniuses. I mean, they yeah. came up with the yeah. most ridiculous ideas, and they had such a great team that could just pull anything off. Basically, the fact that you can get thirty six Polaroids in a roll through this freaking processor thing—it's yeah. crazy. These people were nuts. If only yeah. we could have stuff like that now. I'm, we're we're born in the wrong time. Well, yeah, yeah, we yeah, have, yeah. but we had iPhones and that kind. But of we have iPhones, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, and we're got, on like we have eight K sensors and yeah, we're like that. live but talking from different countries on video, so it, it's fine. Like we look, we're, <laughs> we're we're good shape. <laughs> yeah, that is is good things and bad things. Yeah, yeah. and uh, now talking about the 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 other part, I don't know if if you already asked David what was what? the the worst experience oh yeah yeah we did but, discuss yeah oh sorry uh, but, we had uh, some eight, we had some eight by ten gone wrong that was the the worst experience oh come on no <laughs> not well, ideal yeah, that, that's enough i, I, I yeah i don't want to relive that i can't relive that <laughs> go, go with, all, with other questions man. i'll watch the video <laughs> <laughs> choose another question but uh i don't know what what do you prefer i, I mean if you have your your to choose your favorite camera for 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 instant film or, or yeah or packages what do you prefer uh, studio like shooting indoors or outdoors i think i know the answer uh, already but it's an inter it's a great question because it i think it completely depends i think there's something really fun about the studio experience and mm -hmm. and especially like working with somebody it's, it's a very, very fun intimate environment and you can control everything which i love um and certainly with something like eight by ten i might prefer that just because i can really shape it and i'm i do love taking my eight by ten camera out of the studio but but there i feel like there is adventure is such a major thing for me and and polaroid is such a great companion for adventure so i think my yeah. favorite way to use polaroid is on the go seeing new things and capturing a bit of that physical thing with me like especially like just to go back to this like road trip i was just on um going to a national park going to this amazing place capturing it being able to hold it it's like proof that i was there like some people yeah. collect maps or collect a rock from wherever you go or some sand from the beach I get to have like a physical print that I made in the moment. And so I think Polaroid is amazing for that. And probably that would be my answer to that. Yeah, it is a great answer. And now I, I get that feeling because there is no no digital intermediate bef between True. what you saw and what you have in your hands in that print. It's all, all made in, a, in an instant. Come on. In an instant. Ah, it's yeah. an instant. That's like YouTube. Ah. Oh, well, now it's all making sense. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is great. It is and like, a great answer. And and like you know, when I'm looking back at my family's Polaroids or Polaroids I took when I was like four years old, I'm like, I literally made this photo when I was four years old. I handled this physical print. I pressed the <laughs> shutter and it came out. It's mind blowing. It's like time traveling when you're holding something like that. So I. I, I have binders full of Polaroids, and I feel like uh, I'll have them for the rest of my life. It'll be so cool to have those with me. Yeah. How 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 does those that Polaroid or uh, age? The they they age they, fine. They, they age they fine. They keep well. Okay. Yeah, if you store them right, uh, the I mean the Polaroids from my, when I was one years old look the exact same as they did back then as they do now, and even the new chemistry mm -hmm. stores well as long as you don't like um, put it in front of the sun. 
Yeah, for like yeah. two weeks. <laughs> that'll, that'll be fine. In the desert. In the desert. Yeah, yeah. If you lay it face up in the desert for three weeks, there may be some damage. <laughs> ben, so you have some options on instant uh, photography. Um, which one do you prefer, Kodak, Fuji, or Polaroid? Which... Um, right now, in terms of instant film, I think my favorite, like, currently produced option That's a it's a good question. I really love SX70 film. Um, it's it's very temperamental. It's it has a lot of contrast. It could be uh, sometimes challenging to work with, but when an SX70 shot comes out perfectly, you know it's got the like slower speed. It's got the finer details. It, it it's the closest reproduction I think to like the old school Polaroid look, and I would say that probably. Um, I think it would be interesting if if there was like a better Instax camera. It mm. maybe would be like <laughs> possibly Instax, but Instax just doesn't produce or Fuji just doesn't produce like great instant cameras, unfortunately. Yeah, they they are fun to use, but, but yeah, that, yeah, that's it. Yeah, the film yeah. is so good. I mean, one of the craziest experiences I had this year was shooting with the um, excuse me, the the Lomo Graflock four by five back that mm. Lomography mm. is making and putting Instax wide into the, the back of a four by five camera and seeing those results, it was like, what the hell? This film is like basically FP 100 C like yeah, the details, on. all of the details are there. The film quality is almost as good. I mean, it's a little bit different because it's integral film and like it develops, it's not peel apart, but it is beautiful and it just shows you how upsetting it is that fuji doesn't make better cameras and like nobody really makes great cameras for that format and so the graph lock back is a game changer though I, you guys got to check out my video on that if you haven't but um yeah there's new options coming out every day people are always trying to improve upon that yeah actually there is i, mm -hmm. I have one camera that i bought on um, on kickstarter It's called the, oh, which one? The Nantz 4042. I was just gonna bring that up. Okay, uh, so well, you have that, that camera? <laughs> yeah, actually, and um, that uh, camera. Um, let me let me see it. Let's see her. I want to well, see that. Well, yeah. this is the <laughs> this is the results with Instax wide with that camera, and actually, it's very. As you as you uh, you said, it's like one one hundred C. Yeah. It yeah. Way? It's it's beautiful actually the 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 film in this camera it's it, it, with Instax wide is it's amazing actually it, it's really cool that it's crazy you mentioned that that the I'm gonna be using that camera soon I'm very excited to use it what lens are you using with it like a it's, native lens or no it's a Voigtlander um, ooh okay you're putting the, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, the, the good the stuff fancy, the fancy using stuff, the yeah. good <laughs> stuff oh there's cameras falling everywhere yeah sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's juggling cameras over there. Yeah. There's boxes as well. Yeah, sorry. Cameras sorry. on the floor <laughs> also. And it's not a Voidlander, it's a car size, but it's... Okay, um, all right. Oh, come so, on. Ooh, look at that thing. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Damn, I cannot wait to yeah, use it. Great. It's beautiful, but the only problem that I have with this camera, it's the battery is very, very... It's it's at in a five minutes, like... Yeah. Oh, jeez. Come so, on. Wait, what battery yeah. does it take? It, it's... Uh, I think is it me. rechargeable or no? Yeah, you can use rechargeable. It's a double A, double A battery. Okay, it's a double uh, A battery that lasts five minutes. We don't love yeah. that, but just yeah. just one double A battery. Two. Oh. Okay. We'll five probably get minutes? to it What? in five yeah. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It's I don't know. Maybe it's because it's the first uh, the Kickstarter version that maybe right. Has, it's got something. <laughs> How's bad. the build quality? Like, does it it's, feel? It's is it plastic or metal? It's plastic. It's, okay. it's almost all plastic, but it's it feels feels good. But it doesn't. When they have first a, announced a, it, I thought they were like, something. but yeah, it's big. It's, it's big. It's it's big. It does look big. Yeah, but yeah, it doesn't really look like a 35 millimeter camera. It looks like no. a Pentax six four five or something. <laughs> it's like a fake advertisement uh, camera. That you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like a toy camera, like a like a, a movie prop. <laughs> Yeah, 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 it's, it's a problem. Portions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, it's 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 weird, but uh, it's nice to use that kind of uh, of film in this camera, actually. And how does the mount work on that? Because it, I, I saw that you oh. can use like other kinds of of lenses with it. 
Yeah, it's the M42 mount. Oh wow, that's great. So you can use any any M42 lens. That that's so cool. The most po popular mount on vintage lenses. So wow. Can, yeah, yeah, there are okay. Some great glass for for yeah. M M42. Yeah. Actually, you can use oh, great. a lot of options with the lenses with this camera. It, cool. It's cool. It's cool. Actually, it's cool. I bought it because it's very, very, very nice to use instant uh, film with this kind of lens. You know? Yeah, absolutely. That's, yeah. That's so, so Fuji Instax film is great. The the cameras aren't. That's really yeah. the yeah, thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. film is incredible, and it, it's just the cameras are doing it a disservice. You know, it's it's unfortunate, but I don't think Fuji will ever make it. It would be cool to see what like um, it would look like in an SX70. Like if, if you could shoot Instax wide in an SX70, I wonder what it would look like. But um, we'll never know. <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> but that's or maybe, okay. Or maybe we do. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe they maybe, maybe in they uh, they see in this. And they will start to move. Yeah, uh, maybe yeah. they'll act. <laughs> <laughs> this is so, this, they're on notice. Yeah, <laughs> talking about uh, uh, Fuji, what what are your thoughts of the Fuji Instax printer that you can oh print gosh. like a, a, a picture from your phone and just <laughs> print it in a frame <sighs> like like it's instant? I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, and I have the, here's the thing. Sorry, the sorry for asking that. But. <laughs> no, it's a, it's an interesting question because there's a couple answers to this. First of all, like Polaroid makes the lab the that you put your phone on top of, and then it can it exposes an image and prints that. Oh, yeah. That is a little bit different to me than the Fuji Instax printer, which I think is like a digital process, right? Like it, it's just like feeding data it, it into the printer. I, it's just I, a printer, I, yeah. Yeah. But the Polaroid uh, Lab is literally a camera. It's like a macro camera that's taking a picture of your phone screen, and like that's not better necessarily, but it's, <laughs> but it's like at least a camera. <laughs> like it's at least analog in a way. Like the Fuji yeah, yeah. ones are like, oh, what are you doing? Um, and don't don't you dare share it to Instagram pretending it's an instant photo because <laughs> it ain't. Because Ben will notice. I will notice. <laughs> I will do stuff I can't take back. I will <laughs> say things I can't take back. You will report the photo. And I will report it as inappropriate. <laughs> inappropriate content. Yeah, inappropriate or spam. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that well, that's that's a, a resume of your thoughts on the Fuji Index Printer. Yeah, I think that 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 pretty clearly sums it up. <laughs> uh, and then your your thoughts about the Impossible Project, the One Instant Project, and uh, Polaroid, um, because Polaroid is it's uh, actually doing stuff, no? right? Yeah, so, yeah. So, it's what is your thoughts? It's pretty impressive, like how much the company Polaroid is currently doing. It, it's, it's. I, I think people don't give them enough credit for that. Like the fact that there's, first of all, the fact that Polaroid even exists, amazing. Um, the fact that they're released, they're releasing, they released a new format like two yeah. months ago. It's crazy. Um, the Polaroid Go, love it or hate it, it's a new format. It's there's there's a new film format that was created this year. Like that is mind blowing. Yeah. Um, and, they're, you know, they're releasing new cameras all the time. They're releasing uh, Duochrome, which is like a really cool black and white emulsion. Um, I, I'm very impressed with how much they've, how far they've come and how stable their product is. Um, I think that One Instant uh, is another really interesting project, and I'm a big fan of it. This is the Peel Apart film from yeah. SuperSense. Um like I was saying, like, I really want them to get on the bandwagon of making new chemistry because otherwise they're just going to use up all this old, old chemistry and then what you know, what did we learn? What did we gain? But um, I think that film is, is beautiful. I think the main issue is they don't have international distri distribution, so shipping is very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's as expensive as the film. So like, if you wanted to order uh, a, a six-pack, you're paying that amount plus times two for shipping. So it's kind of tough. Um, mm. But I think both companies are, are doing their best. I think doing great. I'm impressed. Yeah. Actually, I'm impressed too with one instant project because I know one shot, it costs like 30 euros, something like that. So it's, it's expensive. 
Uh, yeah, it's expensive. Thirty that, euro, euros for one yeah. shot. One no, shot. it's three. It's a three pack for three thirty pack. euros. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Well, still three. a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that is, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. I mean, it's more expensive when you incorporate the shipping. It's more expensive than Polaroid eight by ten film, which is like that's cr- that's nuts. Yeah. Polaroid eight by ten film is ridiculous. It shouldn't cost, you know. I mean that that film costs one hundred eighty dollars for ten shots, but you know, Super Sense almost costs that much. It's kind of nuts, but. <laughs> Hopefully they get the price down, or they find distribution or whatever. I know in Europe the shipping is all over the place because of Brexit and everything. But yeah, hopefully they hopefully they get some like U.S. based distribution soon. Well, yeah, maybe, that'll maybe be great. that will help. Yeah, actually. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, if they have U.S. based distribution, it it will be also easier to uh, bring that to Mexico. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This because... is like North America distribution would be nice. Yeah. So yeah. Ben and. Uh, What are you? I, I know you. You told us about uh, a book you're 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 working on, but what are you doing right now? What are, are the next projects? If you can tell us, if if you oh yeah, if you can. Yeah, no. This the book that I'm working on right now. It's very overwhelming because I just finished the second round of 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 taking photos for it, and yeah. now I'm like. It's I'm in that zone where I've got a million options and I got to figure out how to wean yeah. it down. I got to scan a bunch of stuff. It's going to take weeks to do that. Hopefully by the end of the year, I'll have that together. Um, the first book that I released of Polaroids, Roadside Hudson Valley, which was um, like a journey through where I live in New York, uh, north of where I live in New York, um, to all these old locations that have yet to be plowed that are tastes of like the 1950s and 1960s. Um, memories of the past that somehow have survived. That book was really fun to make, and the reaction was so positive to it. It really made me realize, oh, I could definitely do this again. And so that's definitely the next thing I'm working on. Um, and hopefully, with the ch- YouTube channel incorporating more like travel stuff. COVID is obviously a disaster, but um, yeah. the the more I can incorporate more people into the channel, I think the better. I still got to figure out a system for that. Like, how do you, uh, you know, it's one thing to like feature somebody. It's another thing to like make a full episode with them and like incorporate their process into what you're doing. And that's something I still need to learn how to do well. But um, I think that that would be cool. Like getting as many people involved at this point, the community is so great. So that's, that's going forward. I think really what I want to work on with the YouTube channel at least. Well, Amazing. yeah, that sounds great. Please do because yeah, all, yeah. all, the, all the community <laughs> in, here in Mexico, it's like we told you earlier. We we are like just every week waiting for new episodes <laughs> of all these people that that upload that's uh, awesome analog videos to to YouTube and 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 that is great. So it, it you guys have a, a great uh, fan base in, here in Mexico. Yeah. So keep, That's keep, up awesome. the, keep up the the great work and thank you for that. <laughs> oh, I always appreciate it. Um, the like I was saying at the beginning, like the communication with people, the friendships that you build through this. Um, that's what it's really all about. And like when you travel and you get to meet somebody for the first time that you've been talking to in like a YouTube comment, something you would never think to do. Like you would be worried that they would kill you or something, but nobody has even attempted to kill me yet, and <laughs> that's a very positive sign. Um, uh, it's and it's it's those human connections that it, it's really that's what it's all about. So uh, hopefully, I get to cultivate a little bit more of that in the future safely and vaccinatedly. In vaccinated, actually, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, Ben, I think this uh, well, let's this this moment for the. For a section on the last sex- section of the interview that it's called one uh, una foto una frase that it means uh, one photo one phrase or one thought whatever you want to say about that photo so okay. uh, i will show you on screen a photo and you will uh, tell us something about it okay 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 i love that this is cool okay perfect so this is the first Ah, oh, what is this? <laughs> Sorry. Is he... Show more. Mm. Okay, this is the first photo. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a great example of of FP100C negative. This is what it looks like. It's unbelievable. 
Um, it is great. <laughs> the background of this is that I, uh, in college, what I was saying earlier was that um, I thought I was going to be into journalism. I decided, oh, wait, no, that's not really what I want to do. So I just dropped that major. I was like, what am I going to do? I've always been interested in astronomy and space. And I figured, well, why not just learn that? Like, maybe I won't study it professionally, but I can do something I'm interested in in school while I'm doing internships and other things like that. And so I studied astronomy. It's always been a passion of mine. And when I started this YouTube channel, I was thinking, well, what are some fun themes that I can apply to these photo shoots? And I was like, well, I would love to dress up like a NASA astronaut because why not? <laughs> it's a wish fulfillment. You know, why wouldn't I do that? So we did this photo shoot. This is on FP 100 C that's, that's one of those negatives. And boy, I'm just cheesing in that photo because it, it feels good. It feels good to be in that suit. <laughs> yeah, actually, it, it looks it looks amazing. The colors looks amazing, actually. That yeah, this color. is an example of where if it works, it works. It, like the negative mm -hmm. really looks cool. Yeah. yeah. And I love the uh, that it says Mission Capture FP 100. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. that's, that's really, yeah. really cool. As if NASA was using instant film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go with the text uh, photo that it's this one. Okay, this one. This is like this is this is like live, live TV, oh. folks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the oh, it doesn't show up. Uh, okay. nope. We we're, we're stuck with the the okay. Na NASA guy. <laughs> okay. I mean, we're, we love we're, this photo. We're, but, okay. We'll just keep it out there. We're, we're stuck with with. I'll just disappear behind it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know what what is happening right now. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Let me see if I can. Yeah, let me. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, this is now a doozy. we're getting serious. Yeah, this is a doozy. <laughs> okay, so this was um, this is an eight by ten black and white Polaroid, awesome, um, awesome. which is so Thank cool. You. The format yeah, is beautiful. Um, this is Dorian. He is an actor that I worked with. Uh, this is one of those like random connections you do by being like a photographer. I, have you ever played the game Uno? Yeah. Yeah, actually. Yeah. The cards, so, the yeah, cards. the card game. So I was hired by them to do um, a really, really ridiculous photo shoot. It was so fun <laughs> where this guy dressed up in an Uno jersey and the and Uno brought in a, a competitive like arena style table into my studio. Like they built this crazy table and Come stage on. and he was like supposed to be like a competitive Uno player. Like that was the, that was like the, <laughs> the joke. And so he had like a Uno headband, Uno jerseys, like, you know, the, sweatpants. The, the ultimate Uno player. Yes. No. <laughs> and so we just had the best time on that shoot. It was just like the most fun thing ever. And, you know, after that, you want to reconnect with people and you want to like keep those relationships going. And when I was doing the YouTube channel, I was like, I would love to use Dorian for something. He's like the kind of guy who's game for everything. He's a competitive Uno player now. He, he, <laughs> maybe he'll maybe he'll be in a Polaroid YouTube channel. Uh, so he was like, absolutely, I'll do whatever. I'll even, you know, production assistant, whatever you need. Um, and so we did this narrative episode in black and white. And it was one of the most fun episodes because it got to I got to apply my filmmaking to it. At the very end of the shoot, I'm like, I would die right now if we did a polaroid eight by ten we gotta fit this in it's gonna take a minute but let's set this up so at the very end of the shoot we've been shooting for like eight hours we just popped this shot and it is sick he looks amazing in that suit it's amazing and actually that format in the instant in instant photography it's amazing uh, it's I yeah it, it. it's it's amazing like the resolution you can even get out yeah. of uh yeah, 8 by you, 10 polaroid you you posted this and and then a crop a, yeah, a yeah. Section and it it was awesome. The the level of detail it has it, it is great. And it's actually, it's great. shocking. The the aesthetic of the photo that you have the the frame the blue frame and mm, that yeah, uh, yeah. and that uh, little split of uh, I don't know, chemicals over there. I yes, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It all adds up. Yeah, it is yeah. great. Yeah, I love that. I yeah. appreciate it. And actually, that it's random. It's it's not uh, in in post. No. It's in the middle. right, right, right. That's amazing. So the next photo is this one. It's in. This is the last. One. <laughs> no. It's a joke. It's a, it's, it's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> it's this one. Oh, this is. 
I'm almost wearing the same glasses. <laughs> this was um so this is another interesting format. So this is Polaroid four by five film. Um this is a, a peel apart film that they made and we had this box and I've been just sitting on it. It's just been in the fridge. I'm like, when am I gonna pull this out? This was at the very end of our NASA shoot. And uh, we were like, all right, we got to try this thing. We got the four by five back. We attached it to the eight by 10 camera. Um, we had, we took the, uh, the, the curtain you go under from behind the camera and we used that as the backdrop. As so backdrop. this reflective <laughs> backdrop is really just the, uh, the covering for the, the four by or the eight by 10 camera. And it just came out insane. We peeled it and we were like losing our minds we couldn't believe it. It's another example of like the level of detail you can even get on this stuff. Yeah. Um, and just, I mean, I'm looking pretty rugged there, which we love. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's great that that backdrop uh, almost looks like a, a spaceship from. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. I, I, I was, I, after that, I haven't done it since, but I'm, I'm like, I want to do like a series of photos of this backdrop because it looks cool. Like, yeah. I definitely want to use that again. Yeah, it's that's like a great that, idea. It's like those uh, backgrounds that they use in the in the old west. That, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, they, they they change a lot and they have a, a lot of background. It, it looks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Different. I've always wanted one of those things. Yeah, it's amazing. I, <laughs> That's got I, like 20 backgrounds. Like, do you yeah. want to be in Seattle, Washington, or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you want to be by a chimney? In a, yeah, in a, we in have a, a cabin. We, we have a farm scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's go with the next, and it's this one. Ooh, this is a this is a good example of the, the crazy things that can happen with Polaroid eight by ten. So, <laughs> so this was a selfie. Um, yeah. So there's a a large mirror that we have in the studio, and it's great for this kind of thing because you can just sort of mess around with it. And this was um, a film, or the first time I was using the Intrepid eight by ten, which is uh, a newly produced camera in from England, and I was trying to give it a whirl. We, I put an old, I think that expired uh, a few years ago, but um, it revealed a light leak, as you can see, <laughs> as you can see, <laughs> a pretty substantial light leak, which thank God we've plugged up since. But um, yeah, this was a, this was my attempt with the, with the eight by 10 Intrepid, but still another eight by 10 shot, which I, I still love. The detail is crazy. Yeah, actually, I, I also that I love about your Instagram uh, profile is the design that you have because you put that background and it's it's very pleased the it's a very pleased profile to to see to enjoy because I appreciate it. Was, it. Uh, it's a it's yeah, a that's one of, of the the goals I had with making it was I want people to if you're coming to this page, you're just seeing my personality like and and my personality is very colorful and I wanted it to look like me. I didn't just want it to look like every other page so. The fact that you notice that is is nice. I love that. That's like what I hoped people would would see when they went there. Amazing. And this is so, the ben, so, so, sorry, sorry, David. Go, go, ben, go. with this camera, is exclusively to shoot uh, instant film, or you can shoot celluloid also? Yeah, you can shoot anything on it. I, I've okay. shot a lot of celluloid. Um, the only difference, actually, it's almost the same thing in terms of the holder, but Polaroid has a specific holder, so okay. the negative that you would normally load into like uh the double the dual dark slide holder yep. instead of that it's it, it's a sheet of like paper over the negative you put that into the holder and a little tab is sticking out and you pull it out mm -hmm. and the negative like uh, gets stuck inside the holder it's bizarre so it, okay. it's the same it's the same back it's the same thing but it's just a special holder that costs like three hundred dollars, something stupid. <laughs> so is is the same process with the FP one hundred C, right? That did you? Put um, the... No, actually, those are designed no? differently. The, the, oh, okay. the um, that it's just a very weird thing. I'll, I'll show you guys a video or something. It's it's bizarre. You're pulling. It's not like the same thing as FP. It's unveiling the negative inside okay. this plastic holder. It's bizarre. Okay, but okay. I don't. It's it's one of those things. How the hell did Polaroid even think of that? Like, why did they even think of that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God bless that meeting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is the last one, and it's a portrait. So. Ooh, this is this is Great my picture. grandfather, Lad Fraternelli, um, former actor. He was in The Sopranos. He was in a bunch of TV shows and movies um, as like an extra. He, he didn't really have that many lines in the past, but he's one of my favorite people to photograph because he's got so much personality in his face. And, yeah. uh, and 
certainly when I'm shooting with rare formats, I always like to get one of him because, you know, he's up there in age and I want to make sure I preserve him in every single different format <laughs> that exists. And yeah. um, this was on a 3000 speed Polaroid film. And yeah. uh, that wow. film is hard to get these days without it being completely Dry, yeah. dried up because yeah. it's old. Mm-hmm. It was from 2006 or something. Um, and 3000 speed film is more likely for some reason, I'm not really sure why it's more likely to dry up from the Polaroid days. Um, so I lit this with, uh, his kitchen lamp and, and we sort of just like <laughs> positioned it around him. I didn't even bring my lighting equipment in cause I was just like, let's just see what the 3000 speed film can do. And we got this awesome shot of him. I love the shot. Amazing. No, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love the 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 gray the tone in the yeah the tonality is so cool yeah, yeah it's amazing and look at that spread i mean pretty much full spread on that chemistry yeah yeah it's perfect, yeah. It's perfect. actually it's perfect it's crazy it's near mind yeah i've got that <laughs> up. i've got that yeah near mint plus 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 <laughs> <laughs> i've got that one up in the office hanging so yeah amazing. that one's that one's a keeper then well this is this was the last photo so then it was a pleasure. Thank you very much. It was amazing, amazing to have you as a guest. So please, please continue with your work, with your photos. And if you come to Mexico City, let us know. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for having me on. This was awesome. Um, and again, open invitation Thank to you. New York. We are going to do an 8 by 10 shoot. We're going to do a 4 by 5 shoot. We're going to do every format. We'll lay them out next to each other. And it'll be a whole okay, day. We'll hey. do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm up to that. Um, yeah. Ben, me thank too. you. Thank you a lot. I, I learned a lot in this in this in this chat. It was an awesome chat and I need to get more into instant photography. I only I only own in an Instax wide. Uh but I definitely want more cameras for, for getting better results because we already said that. Those cameras. Yeah, are, yeah. Are no, great. there's the the world is is waiting, and, and there's many <laughs> options for the for your future. I, I'm happy to be your spirit guide on the rest of this journey for you. So just let me know. I'm always here for you guys. We're we're family now. We're familiar. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, we. <laughs> yeah, we are. Finally, we met. Finally, yes, we met. Yes, this was long impressive. faded. Yeah, so it, it's time to 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 spend those savings in 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 the <laughs> yes, <instant> film. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Ben, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you guys so lot, much. Ben. Take care and let's uh, keep in touch via Instagram, YouTube, everywhere. Absolutely. Absolutely. I will, send Bye, you guys. I will send you the link of this interview. Yes. Love it. Okay, good. <laughs> awesome. I'll share it. I'll share it. I'll broadcast it. Thank you. Thank Perfect. you, Ben. <laughs> okay. Appreciate Bye. it, guys. See you soon. Cheers. Bye.